Well, let's move on to some sleepers. I'll start off with Damien Inglis. I think he's from France. And to me, with all these international prospects, a lot of them being guys like Nurkic or Saric being rated in the top 20 or 10, to me Inglis, I mean, he's a 6'9 small forward with a great wingspan. The fact that he has good court vision, rebounder, he's a good defender, He's not a great athlete and his shooting is just average, but he's not a terrible athlete and certainly not a terrible shooter. So I think he'd be a great pick, I mean, in the late first round. But I mean, I have him ranked number 10 on my big board. Call me optimistic, but I'm pretty high on him. I think that's a perfectly reasonable ranking of English. I wrote about him today, but as far as I can tell, like, the only reason why nobody likes him is because he had a really low points per game total. He averaged like four and a half points per game playing in France for 15 minutes a game. People love all points per game. And there just seems to be some sort of, you know, odd, inherent underrating of French leagues. Nobody likes Capel and nobody likes English. You know, the Spurs are always drafting French players, so I just assume France is underrated. So English is definitely one of the guys I'm high on. Um, I'm really high on a lot of the international class. Another international guy that I'm high on is uh, Nikola Jakic, who is, uh, he's Serbian and he plays in the Adriatic League. And basically he's 6'11", 73 weight span, has good big man size. But, you know, he doesn't have great strength, he's slow, he's unathletic. He kind of reminds me of Brad Miller, because Brad Miller had these awesome stats, but, you know, he was slow and athletic, so he went undrafted. Even though, um, if you guys look at uh, Lane Dashrow's draft modeling, Brad Miller is like the top statistical prospect according to his EWP formula in the entire draft. And uh, Nikola Jukic, similarly, is like a top five prospect according to Kevin Pelton's work formula. And he just has just an insanely good assist rate for... A 19-year-old 6'11 player. And, you know, he didn't shoot threes that well in that league, but he can hit threes. He has a good two-point percentage. So, you know, if you figure he can just use his height to be not completely terrible on defense, just kind of be, like, passively okay, he has a really, you know, unique offensive package to offer. And I kind of think he's just way undersold as a uh, second-rounder, and I have him as a mid-first-round value. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go back to U.S. players here. English was one of my guys as well, but um, obviously Daniel's already touched on him. Guys who I think, you know, will carve out very good NBA careers. Nick Johnson from Arizona, I'm quite high on him. Joe Harris, CJ Wilcox, I think they'll find roles. But the guy I'm actually going to pick is a first-round talent, really. Could even go in the lottery. But Adrian Payne, I'm very high on Payne. I think the only real thing holding him back is his age. If he was 18, 19 years old, and I know he's saying, yeah, but he's not. But, I mean, if he was 18, 19 years old, he'd be a top five pick. You look at Adrian Payne, and he's got, again, a little bit like Vonley, a great combination of skill, size, and athleticism. You know, the big knock on him is his age, but when you look at someone like Doug McDermott, so Doug McDermott's been doing what he's been doing for the last three years. As you probably say with McDermott, his game looks more complete. Um, after, you know, four years of being in Creighton. Adrian Payne, it's not like he's been performing at the same level for the last two, three years. He's just made a huge jump, leaps and bounds, gotten loads better shape, really worked on his shot, and you look at him, and if you didn't know anything about kind of prospects, but you were just able to watch them play, you'd be thinking, why is this guy not getting talked about more? So, he's definitely a guy I'm high on. I think it could be one of those things where we look back in a few years, a little bit like Taj Gibson. You know, Dodge Gibson was very old when he got drafted, and everyone looks back now going, my God, how did the Bulls get to him? He was a steal. You look back now, and you don't care about the age. And I have a feeling that this could kind of be a similar to story to that. Yeah, he really is a stretch four, but he also has conditioning issues. I think that might limit him from being a starter, but I could see him playing 25 minutes a game. No, don't get me wrong, I'm high on him. He's actually my eighth-ranked prospect, which is pretty high. Dean, what do you think about him? Well, he's kind of been a tough prospect for me all season because I always like to reference the statistical models because I think, you know, people like Lane Asher and Kevin Pelton, they just do a great job of, you know, trying to process the available statistical information to, you know, come to the right conclusion. And their models just hate pain. And that's something I can't really reconcile because, you know, for me, it's like, well, he's tall, he has good tools, he could be at least competent defensively, he makes threes, he's a solid rebounder, he can finish inside, so what's not to like? And I think kind of if there was a critique that is going to come statistically aside from his age, which is that for his age, he is a really bad passer. And so I don't know if that's going to be something that's kind of getting underplayed. It seems like passing is sort of the thing that nobody really thinks about except for point guards. But, you know, I'm kind of wondering is if you're 23 and you still are getting a really low assist rate, 
how big of a deal is it? Does that mean that whenever you catch the ball in the NBA that you're not going to be able to move it crisply within the flow of the offense and it's going to clog things up a little? I'm not really sure. But I think he's still underrated by statistical models because, you know, stretch fours kind of, you know, I'm interested to see how it goes because everybody loves him, but, you know, stats hate him. So I'm kind of interested to see where it falls. And I'm kind of stuck in the middle. It's like, eh, you know, late first, early second rounder. Yeah, fine in the late first round. I don't think I quite agree with the lottery hype, though. The funny thing is with AJ Payne, you're right, everyone seems to love him, but then everyone's like, well, would you use a lottery pick on him? And everyone's like, oh, no. <laughs> everyone's like, I would trade back and take him, you know, and that seems to be everyone's target for if they trade back, um, which is funny. But no, I think the pass was a great point. You watch the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals, and if you can't pass, it doesn't matter if you're a big man or if you're playing point guard, you're not seeing the floor in San Antonio. So it's definitely an area of his game. He's probably never going to be a great passer, but if he can at least become an average one. And the thing, he's not unselfish. He seems like a great team player, but the assist rate, that's a great uh, point by Dean. 